Hi, I'm Tom Barkley. I'm the Senior Product Manager for Flash Professional. And today I want to give you a demonstration of a new capability called the Toolkit for CreateJS, which is a complementary panel for Flash Pro CS6 that allows you to create your content, create your animations and artwork in Flash, and to be able to publish that content out to HTML5. And we're going to use that today to create a two-part video uh, to create a simple game. Uh, the first part of the game will be the designer perspective, where we'll prepare the assets and follow some best practices and publish those out to JavaScript. And then the second video, we'll come back as the developer and we'll add the interactivity to our game in JavaScript, leveraging those JavaScript assets. Um, so first, let's preview the game so you guys can see what it looks like. And this is all running in an HTML5. Uh, we've got some platypi that are coming in here from the left, or actually from the right. And the object is to pop their balloons before they get over to those tasty treats there on the left. Uh, so you can see we've got some mouse click events here. We've got some nice animation going. We've got uh, some logic for the score. Very simple game. Um, now let's get started in actually preparing the assets for that game. So here we are in Flash Professional CS6. And we're going to install the, the free panel. And it's available under other panels. First, you will have to download it and install it using the extension manager. Uh, and then once you have it, you go to Window, Other Panels, and then find Toolkit for CreateJS. And it pops up a little panel that looks like this. I'm just going to dock it over here for now. Um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, point out some best practices as you're preparing your assets for CreateJS. You can see that we've got three layers here on the timeline. We've got a score, which is just a text field with an instance name. Very important to provide meaningful instance names that the developer can refer to as they're adding the interactivity and manipulating those elements in JavaScript. Um, so we've got the score text instance name. Uh, we've got a background that has a, a gradient, some graphic symbols here that have been transformed uh, with an alpha property applied to them. And then we also have an image over here in the background. Uh, for more complex vectors, if you're dealing with very complex shapes, it might make sense for performance reasons to transform it into a bitmap uh, and then to be able to combine that with the other content. Let's go take a look at the meat of the application. And that's really the animation here. And that's this platypus. So if we scrub through here, you can see it's got three different levels. There's a labels level. Um, and we have three states, where there's the idle state, where the platypus is just rocking back and forth as he's floating across the stream. There is the, let me see, you can see the frame label over there, the pop state, and that's when the balloon pops. And then there's the fall state, where he's actually falling out of the sky after his balloon has been popped. Um, and it's important to note that as you're working with content and targeting CreateJS, when you're tweening a symbol, uh, that symbol must be on its own layer in the timeline. So for the main idle um, symbol here, which is the platypus idle, uh, it is on its own layer here using classic tweens. Um, and then the next symbol over here is uh, an instance of the platypus pop, which is a graphic symbol. And that's on a separate layer. So you can only have one instance per uh, animation on each level. Um, that's a constraint of the framework. Um, but then you can also go in and inject some JavaScript code into the timeline to be able to manipulate that timeline and take advantage of those frame label names. Um, so we're going to go in here and inject some Java code that will be output when we publish this to CreateJS. Simply apply a block comment with a JS tag. And we'll just give a space here. Now we just um, we can basically use the same code. This is JavaScript that I'm typing here. Go to and play. And we'll refer to the fall frame label. And when we go to export, it will ignore the action script that you see below there, but it will export that JavaScript and include that in the symbol definition that is exported out to JavaScript. Um, we don't recommend adding a lot of interactivity in the timeline, but basic timeline navigational controls. Um, the other thing that is important to point out here is that one of the best practices when you're working with uh, character animations is to separate the body parts of your character into multiple graphic symbols. And you can see that with the platypus parts over here, beak, body, eye, all of those are broken out with uh, names here in the layers. Those layer names will be export to the JavaScript. Um, and rather than doing this with tweens as opposed to frame by frame animation that can reduce the file size and result in better performance. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and just drop that symbol onto the stage. And so we can preview what it's gonna look like when we export it. So we're just gonna put that over here. And importantly, we're gonna give it a meaningful instance name of platypus. And I'll go ahead and use the panel now to export that. So when I hit publish, it's gonna convert it. It's gonna output that JavaScript file of all the symbols in the library, as well as the content that's on the stage. Um, we're using, in this case, the hosted versions, the CDN hosted versions of the libraries, but you could also publish the libraries out yourself. And then when I hit publish, it's gonna convert that and publish it in the browser. And you can see this is all HTML running here. There's no interactivity yet. We've just published out the assets and it creates a very small HTML file that allows you to preview those assets in the browser. So you can have a good idea of what the content looks like before you hand it off to the developer so they can start adding that interactivity. So that's the end of the publishing phase for our toolkit for great JS workflow. Stay tuned for the next part of this video where we play the role of the developer and add interactivity using JavaScript and leveraging those assets that we just published. But you can learn more now by going to the CreateJS Developer Center on the Adobe Developer Connection. Thank you very much for watching.